welcome to another episode of What Are You Reading? What Are You Writing? I'm your host, Karen E. Osborne, and I'm excited to introduce you to my guest today. I'm going to tell you a little bit about him, but I'm going to give you a little backstory because um, Rick Reese and I have known each other for I don't know how many years. It's been a long, long time because long we time. used to be, yeah, right, a long time. Uh, it used mm -hmm. to be because we both were uh, working in higher education and we both were managing big shops and raising lots of money. And, and now we're both writers. So that's kind of cool and interesting. Let me tell you more about him. So he has a column, which that, that's one of the reasons that I contacted him because I read his column and love it. So it's called Reese's Pieces. Clever. You get it. And it's in the Berkshire Eagle. And uh, it's really a good, a good column. He also is the author of a memoir, Desperate Love. And, and that is a heart-wrenching and beautiful story. He's written essays for the Newark Star-Ledger and the New York Times. Uh, plus, he's a believer in giving back. Uh, he and his wife, Paula, endowed a speaker series in their synagogue in memory of both of their mothers. And once a year, they invite an author to speak about their writing and how being Jewish has influenced their work. Isn't that cool? So welcome, welcome, Rick. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm delighted to have you. So I told our audience a little bit about our, our backstory that we were both mm -hmm. in, in higher ed and, and we were yeah. raising money and helping our schools raise lots of money and manage themselves effectively. How did you kind of get from there to Rick, the writer? Well, you know, um, I was always writing. Um, when I was in my 30s, uh, moving up that higher red ladder, I guess, um, I, had a, I had a column in a local newspaper. And back then it was also called uh, Reese's Pieces. Um, and uh, yeah, that was really funny. It's actually a humorous column uh, that ran in the um, Forbes owned about 25 uh, local papers in central New Jersey. And uh, I wrote for them for also uh, about, about a year. What was really fun about that was they, um, they illustrated each story I wrote. So that, that was really neat. And I did that for a year. And then of course, you know, I, that was always something on, on the side. And then uh, I was sort of, um, what would be the right term? Well, I wasn't on staff. I was a contributing writer and uh, they got rid of all their contributed writers at one time. And that was sort of the end of, of Reese's Pieces. But I liked it a lot. I continued to write. Um, fast forward, I don't know, 30 years and I was at Fairleigh Dickinson and uh, I was in the MFA program. So I really got to hone, uh, I guess, my voice a little bit. And then when I left, uh, you know, higher ed, like eight, eight months ago, um, I wanted to continue and I wanted to see if I could revive uh, Reese's Pieces. And I started uh, pitching my work to the Berkshire Eagle. And uh, it took a while. I mean, it took me over six months uh, before they said, OK, uh, we'll go with this. And, uh, you know, they'll actually pay me uh, very little, but at least I'm getting paid, which is a nice thing. I think writers should get paid. Uh, and uh, and that's how, how I got there. So it's been... Uh, it's been a good journey. I, I'm, I'm still learning as a writer. I'm in a writer's group now, which I really enjoy. Um, so that's that's uh, sort of it. Yeah, that's very cool. You know, just listening to you, I just had a flash of a memory that I have eliminated from my story. Every time someone asks me about my writing journey, I never mention the fact that I I worked for a newspaper and that I wrote mm -hmm. a column, a weekly column for a yeah. weekly for yeah. a weekly newspaper, and I just totally forgot about that. And, you know, and, and don't forget, and I'm sure this is for yourself as well, uh, you know, a lot of writing and uh, fundraising as well. I wrote a lot of grants. I wrote lots of stories uh, for the university magazines. Uh, so, you know, it's something that has um, served me well in life, for sure. And we've always been storytellers, because one of the things right. you have to do in higher ed fundraising is be a darn good storyteller. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So tell us a little bit about you as a reader. This, this uh, podcast is, uh, what are you reading? Yeah. What are you writing? What kind of sure. reader were you? What kind of reader are you? 
Well, you know, I would say I was not a huge reader as a kid. Maybe towards the end of high school, I started reading more. Um, I like mystery novels. I like Sherlock Holmes. I like uh, Edgar Allan Poe as, as a kid. Um, because most of my writing now is in um, you know, the nonfiction genre, um, I, I like reading nonfiction. The first speaker at our uh, series uh, that you had mentioned that Paul and I uh, established for our mothers was Danny Shapiro, who is a, a wonderful memoirist. Uh, and uh, she spoke at our synagogue last fall. Uh, so I'm, I'm reading a lot of memoirs. Um, one of my favorite books recently was um, Cast by Elizabeth Wilkerson, which is also nonfiction, but just, um, you know, how she weaves together, um, you know, the history of racism in this country, anti-Semitism, the Third Reich, all into one story uh, is really quite remarkable. It's, it's an amazing book and I think everybody uh, should, should read it. And, you know, on, on the fiction side, I've been trying to get through um, an American Tragedy by uh, Theodore Dreiser. Uh, it was written in 1925, um, but it's applicable today because it has a lot to do about uh, uh, classes, you know, and the wealthy and the poor. And uh, it's also a murder, it's like this, it's, it's a murder mystery, um, mm. but it's a tome. I mean, it's 900 pages long and they don't even get to the murder until you're at like page 450. Uh, <laughs> But it's a good read, and, and you know it was actually an important book uh, in, in its time. So I, I would say I'm an intermittent reader. I go in sort of uh, fits and, and, and spurts. I'll read a couple of books, and then I won't read for for a while. You know, I remember mean, reading the paper every day and the news and, and things like that, just trying to stay informed because those are the things that sort of uh, feed my column, right? Um, I mean, I've read a lot about my life and my feelings, but uh, you know, occasionally I draw from what's happening uh, in the real world as well. In the world around you, yeah. And that, that ends up in all of our writings, I think, you know, as we are, whether we're writing fiction or nonfiction, what's happening in the world somehow influences, influences that writing for sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah. One of the things that you, uh, one of the big, big pieces of writing you did was Desperate Love. And I wonder if you could just tell us, that started with, in the New York Times with a, a modern love piece, didn't it? Right. So I had a um, I had a column uh, in Modern Love. It was an essay um, about my son, who uh, at the time was uh, 14, was getting himself uh, in a lot, a lot of trouble and stopped going to school. And uh, we decided it would be a good idea to uh, send him to a wilderness program and then to a therapeutic boarding school. Uh, and I wrote about um, the night that a couple of guys came into our house. When I say night, it's like 3 a.m. Mm. And, and took him away. Uh, and that's the first half of the piece. And the second half of the piece was what it was like when he came home um, 15 months later. So he was gone for a long time. Um, and that piece, um, you know, this was before um, a lot of things that were happening in social media. I had about 350 emails that I received from that. And um, one of them, one of them was from an agent uh, and said, would you like to write a book? And I'm like, sure. And I wanted to write something fiction. And she was like, no, no, no. <laughs> so um, that had its ups and downs, but eventually Desperate Love uh, did uh, come out and it, and it follows my son um, from the time he was born until he was 18, uh, returning from his uh, second a lockdown boarding school and, you know, tried to have a bit of a hope, hopeful ending uh, if possible, but actually things were really not going well uh, in our lives at, at the time. But, it, you know, I, I hear it's a good book. It's a good read. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's an compelling story. And you have two other yeah. sons, right? And so it, it was, uh, yeah. it was affecting, Gabe was affecting everybody's life in the family. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Everybody was a was affected and uh, everybody uh, is, is in the book. My youngest son, who uh, actually is getting married in 10 days, um, mm -hmm. found the manuscript uh, on my bed one day and was horrified, just horrified that we would, that, we, that I would write such a thing. And um, in the book, 
<laughs> I didn't know what to do because I was already at the publisher. I, you know, I said to him, I said, listen, I said, uh, everyone has their price. <laughs> I, said, I said, what's yours? And he says, just change my name. I said, okay. So we, oh. he, we changed it. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, and he wow. actually, all, all my kids are actually very good writers, which is, which, is a nice, which is a nice thing. And they're all doing great, including the one that I wrote the book about, who is just doing phenomenally well right now, which is wonderful. It really is wonderful. And it speaks so much about you and Paula and the family, as well as himself, being able to overcome all yeah. of that. Yeah, that's okay. Well, you know, he has to do it himself, for sure. And it's, it's been a long, it's been a long journey. Uh, yeah. But right now he's in a really good place. Really good place. And congratulations on the upcoming wedding. That sounds yeah. so cool. I, I still think of your boys as yeah. like teenagers and younger. But. Yes, yes, yeah. Well, they're, yeah. they're all growing up, which is nice. Yeah. So, how, you know, going back to your Reese's Pieces, the current mm -hmm. rendition yeah. of Reese's Pieces, you mentioned that you try to keep, uh, it comes, stories come from your own life as well as what's going on in the world today. Is mm -hmm. it easy to come up with a column, you know, on a regular basis? Is yeah. it hard? How much time well, does it take? Do. Yeah, I've... Um... I've been doing it for almost a year now. And uh, when I started out, you know, I, I had a nice list of things I wanted to write about, but I've gone through that list. Uh, so it's a little harder <laughs> than it used to be. Um, but you know, I, I have two weeks, it comes out every other week. So I have quite a bit of time between pieces to come up with uh, something. And usually in a two week period, you know, something happens. That, that, that I want to write about. And this last week, uh, for example, I was really having a hard time uh, coming up with a, a topic. And um, I happened to uh, deliver Meals on Wheels. I do that once a week. And I thought, you know, I'm going to write about the people that I deliver to. And that was actually, as um, in terms of what it took to write that, I wrote it in like two hours. And usually I spend five or six hours on these pieces. So you never know, right? Um, but uh, again, I pull from life and I, and, and I live in this beautiful part of the country, you know, where the skies are always blue and there's lots of lakes and streams and mountains. Um, so it's a pretty special place here. So that often inspires me. And then, you know, things happen. You know, I, I meet interesting people. Um, I, I wrote about my gardener uh, in one piece uh, because he and his partner had uh, matching tattoos. And uh, when I was 18, I got a tattoo with my best friend, an identical tattoo. And um, I tried to sort of befriend this guy and warm up to him and talk about our tattoos and he didn't want to have anything to do with it. <laughs> but uh, it made for an interesting piece, I thought. So you never know what, what, uh, what I'm gonna write about. I never know for, for sure. Yeah. Now, do you get permission like from the people you deliver your meals on wheels to or the guardian? Well, I, I didn't. Do Case. No, I didn't. In fact, and I know that one of them reads my column and in the piece, I changed her name and I said, and by the way, I changed your name, but I'm sure you know who you are. And I didn't say anything, you know, that I think I needed permission. There was nothing too personal about it. And really, um, it was more about me than about them and about, um, you know, you're looking for meaning in life, especially at this point in our lives and, and, and how much joy I get out of doing this. And uh, I think one of the lines was, I, I get you know a thank you and a smile times five once a week, mm -hmm. which I do, which is just, you know, it's a lovely feeling, right? It really is. It really is. Serving, volunteering and serving, having purpose. That's, that's pretty powerful yeah. stuff. It keeps us young, I think. Yeah. So um, you mentioned a couple of books that you liked and read, but do you have any other recommendations for our, our viewers? Anything that you've read recently or anything that you're about to read? Um, I'm about to read, I wish I could say her name. Uh, she wrote um, A Little Life, Hanya Yaganawara, I believe. And mm -hmm. she has a new book out, I think it's called The Book promise she's an extraordinary writer um I, I would highly recommend that i just got it um uh the other day but that's the only there's another book you know i'm also writing for the jewish federation up here um and there's another book uh that's on my reading list 
call um, white people um, love dead Jews. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to appeal to the broader audience, but yeah, I know. Uh, but it's uh, uh, my wife just finished it and uh, she liked it a lot. And actually, the author, uh, oh, no, no, she's not, she'll, she'll be our speaker in, in two years. Next year, we have someone else. But uh, so that's on my, sh my short list. Uh, Right, right now. I have to finish an American tragedy. I have like 200 pages to go. Um, I don't know if I'll live that long, <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna finish that one. All right. Well, I thank you so much for this conversation. It's so wonderful seeing you again and, and speaking with you. And we thank all of you as well. Uh, Rick, if our viewers wanted to find you, uh, if they wanted to read Reese's Pieces, for example, if they wanted to get a copy yeah. of, um, of Desperate Love, your, your memoir, how can, how can they find you? Well, Desperate Love, you can get on, uh, on Amazon. Um, if you just Google uh, me and Berkshire Eagle, uh, all of my stories uh, will, will come up. And um, on, the, um, on the byline is my email. So uh, you can write me on my email. Um, I think after three or four of them, a, uh, a paywall goes up. Um, I'm actually gonna be setting up a website and, and putting them all up pretty shortly. Uh, so that won't happen, uh, but that's how you can reach me. Great, and, is, and, and can they find you as Richard Reese or Rick? Richard, yeah, Richard. Richard Reese, mm -hmm. all right. Very well, formal. it has been a yeah. pleasure. Richard Rick Reese of having a chat with you. And I thank all of you. We both do, Rick and I both thank you all for watching. And we hope that we'll see you next time. On what are you reading? What are you writing? <laughs>